shaved his off. So uh, good job, man. Good job. And uh, it's good. All right. Well, thanks for joining us in la- online. And uh, it's so good to have you here with us today. Uh, my name's Pastor Darren. Well, actually, my real name is Darren. And uh, that's just my title. I'm an exec pastor here at C3 Victory. My honor is to share the word with, uh, with us today. So uh, why don't you jump in your Bibles to Mark chapter 1. That's where we're heading over today is Mark chapter 1. And we're going to hang around there. We're starting a brand new series today. It's called A Home for hope, right? Write that in the chat. We are a home for hope. And uh, you might recognize this from somewhere, right? We have Pastor Nate and Rach released our vision as a church in June. And June seems like it was so long ago, right? June seems like it was like like years ago now. Uh, But um, you need to check out our vision on our website. Uh, Go back over our podcast and find uh, June and just refresh yourself on who we are as a church. And uh, Pastor Nate and Rach released our vision and they gave us a brand new descriptor for who we are as C3 Victory in this new generation, right? This new generation of our church, who are we? We are C3 Victory, a home for hope. So uh, that's who we are. We're a home for hope corporately as a body, but also individually. Each one of us is a home for hope. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. So jump in, into Mark chapter 1 if you haven't got there yet, if you've got your Bible app, you know, version, Olive Tree, whatever Bible app you're using, you know, jump across to that and go over to Mark chapter 1. Let me tell you a little bit of a story. I was in the shops the other day and... Uh, this, this guy walked in, I was at the counter kind of buying my stuff and, and this guy walks in and the lady says, uh, hey mate, just need to get you to sign in and he just ignored her. Mate, need to, need to get you to sign in. You need to check in on the, uh, on the app and he just starts going off his head at her. Yeah, well, my phone's gone and blah, blah, blah and he starts like going off his head and I'm like, whoa, whoa. You know when you, you sense something's about to take place and you're like, oh, okay. What's going on? And uh, the lady who was working in the shop was actually in the line to buy some things from her own shop. You could do that, right? Right? And this guy's like, he, he, he gets some stuff and he's like, you're not even working today. She had like her, you know, her, her work shirt on and everything and the work hat on. He's like, you're in the line. I have to sign out. I have to listen to you. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then she's like, you do have to sign in. It's the law and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, he just takes it to a whole nother level. And he's like pointing his finger at her and shouting at her and I'm like whoa hang on a minute hang on a minute and she's like get out you're banned blah 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 and it's just like going to this level and I'm like whoa I'm not going anywhere I'm just gonna stand here I'm just gonna just hang around in the store for a bit longer just to provide some protection you know I can take care of myself you know and that's never been tested but anyway uh, and, and, and I'm like I'm just gonna hang out here for a little bit longer and provide another male presence in the area anyway this guy leaves and I'm like okay see you guys and walk out Anyway, a couple of days later, I go back. I'm at the same the same shop, and uh, and this lady's there again, and she she just comes over to me and she says, "Hey, um, thanks so much for the other day when you just kind of hung around. Like that was just that was really good for us. That was really good for me. I really appreciated you hanging around a bit longer and just kind of helping out. Thank you, thank you. And I was like, it's so good when." When someone does something, a stranger does something for another stranger, and it kind of restores a little bit of, you know, hope in humanity, that there are still good people out there, good people looking after people, and, you know, people's hope. I was wondering what, what might she have felt when she went home that night? You know, how much she have felt like she would have felt a bit attacked and disrespected and all kinds of stuff. She would have felt uneasy. Maybe I don't want to go to work tomorrow. But her thankfulness of just me, I didn't do anything. I just hung around. I'm just like, ah, what's going on? But she was so grateful and a little bit of hope restored in humanity for her. You and I are called to be a home for hope. Uh, And again, this is from our, our vision and this is the descriptor of who we are, is the new generation of C3 Victory. But it's not just about who we are as, as a body um, or as an organization or even in us reaching into our community and bringing, bringing life and, uh, and all, this, all the stuff that we do. It's not just about our Sunday services either. It's also about who we are 
as, as individuals, just kind of like going about our lives, you know, doing, our, doing our thing when you're at the shops or you're on the phone to your mom or, or whatever, you know, whatever's going on. It's about how we lift people up when we're around them. Just think of a moment when you were last like really in the presence of God and the presence of God was like thick and you were like, oh man, and you were enjoying this, this space and you felt like God spoke to you in your situation. And all of a sudden you just felt lifted. You just felt drawn into this space of trust, this, this moment of peace. And you're like, oh, this is so good. This, this moment where you realize that it's gonna be okay, right? Whatever you're walking through, you're like, oh, God's here. God isn't far off. He hasn't run away. He hasn't abandoned me. He's, he's right here with me in this mess or in this gap, you know. He's present in my situation. And there's, there's this hope that enters into your soul and you feel lifted above your situation into that space of trust and peace. Hope is the result of walking with Jesus. That's it. It's a result of just walking every day with Jesus. So if you're writing notes, maybe you can put this in the chat right now. Write this down. I am a home for hope. Write that in the chat. Put it, pop it in the chat right now. Question for you. What do, you what, are, what do other people experience when they encounter you? What do other people get when they, when they encounter you? What's, what's their experience like? How do they feel when they leave that encounter? When they, when they move from that encounter and into the, the, the next thing in their day, how have you left their soul? How have you left them? What do you carry into every conversation, into every chat, into you know, every text message even, into every Zoom call for work or every FaceTime with your friends? Like, what are you carrying into that space? Because we wanna be a home for hope. As a church community and all that we do as a church, on Sundays, in our V groups, in our ministries, in our, you know, our youth and young adults and everything that we do, we wanna be a home for hope. But this means also that each of us is a home for hope. We're a safe place where people can find hope. They can get a sense of the, the hope that is in us that is kind of oozing out into the world around us. Every single one of us is called to be this walking reservoir of hope, this walking carrier of peace and joy and love and life and the power and the message of the kingdom. We're called to ooze this into the world around us. And not just the people who you'll see in front of this camera, right? Not just the people who you see online or on the platform at church, but every one of us, not even just your V group leaders or those people who seem like really spiritual, like, whoa, those guys, like calm down, guys, calm down, right? Every one of us is called to be a home for hope. And hope isn't like a personality type, right? Hope isn't like an Enneagram number. Right? Or, it's, or it's not the byproduct of being like really extroverted or super bubbly or a, a real people person. That's, that's not the definition of hope, right? Hope isn't excitement. Hope isn't a vibe. Hope isn't, you know, because you're exceedingly happy right now or because everything's going according to plan, right? Hope can exist in the middle of the hardest struggle of your life. Hope can exist in the middle of the trial, in the middle of the where are you God kind of moment. Hope exists in the gap between your reality and what you see as the promises of God. Hope isn't the feeling that you get when there's money in the bank and the kids are finally getting along today, right? That's, that's not hope. Hallelujah, but that's not hope. Hope is the result of, of being with Jesus. Hope is the result of knowing Him, of walking with Him, of experiencing Him, of listening to Him, of partnering with Him. I love what it says in 1 Peter 3 verse 15. It says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Did you get that? 
to give the reason for the hope that you have. Hope is like a defining characteristic of the believer. People should be able to see and experience and sense and wonder at the hope that is inside of you. And oh man, the, the world needs Christians who are filled with hope right now. Believers who are, who are overflowing with this sense of hope right now. The world feels hopeless, but we have Jesus. We have hope. We have an endless supply of hope coming into our worlds and the world needs it. People should ask you about the hope that you have. And Peter's saying like, be ready to give an answer for the hope that you have. Like, what's my answer? It's, it's really just one word. It's just, it's Jesus. Jesus is my hope. Jesus is my everything, right? So let's just look at a moment in Jesus' life right now where he brought incredible hope into a family's life. So if you're writing notes, you can put this in the chat right now. I haven't really looked at the chat yet, but um, write this down. Jesus is the ultimate hope. Number two, Jesus is the ultimate hope. Write that in the chat right now. He is the one who brings hope into everyone that he touches. All right, I'm going to read from Mark chapter 1 right now. I'm reading from verse 29, and it'll be on the screen for you as well today. It says, As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. And Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her and she began to wait on them. Oh, I love this. I love this so much. Jesus has just been in the synagogue, right? And now he's in someone's home. Now he is in someone's life. And Jesus does what he always does when he enters into someone's life. He brings healing and he brings hope. I remember about uh, 12 months ago, uh, I was, uh, I'd been at Baptist Care for seven years, amazing place, I love the people, you know, and it was, a, it was, I was transitioning into starting a job here downstairs at the Victory Centre, and, uh, and it was like two days a week working for CAP, and I remember praying about it, and, uh, and God, I remember super vividly God showing me this same story, but in the book of Matthew. And just revealing to me what, why I was making this shift. There were lots of big shifts happening last year and I really needed something concrete to, to, to hang my decision on. I knew this was what God was leading me to do. And I, and I sensed that out of the same story in Matthew that God was saying to me that you're going to enter into people's homes, you're going to enter into people's lives and you're going to bring healing. And I was like, whoa. And then he says, and then they're going to begin to get up. And then they're going to rise above their situation and they're going to serve Jesus. And I was like, oh man, this is so good. So this is what Jesus is doing right here. He is, he's entered into Simon, Peter and Andrew's home, their place of safety, their place of security, but something's wrong. Someone is sick. There's a sickness in their home. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed sick with a fever. She was a hot mess, right? The mother-in-law, I know that my mother-in-law is watching this today, so I'm not going to make any, any jokes uh, right now. We'll just move on. Um, but Jesus didn't shy away from the problem, right? He moves towards the problem. They tell Jesus there's a problem. You know, Simon Peter's mother-in-law is sick, and he's like, all right, let's go. He moves towards the problem, towards the issue, and then he brings healing into that. That's what we're called to do. We're not called to run away when we see a problem in someone's life. We're called to speak into it. I had a quick chat at a, at a distance from with my neighbor the other day, and I said, hey, how you doing? And she's like, oh, yeah, no, okay, okay. And I sensed that something wasn't right. And I just said, are you all right? Like she's a teacher and she's in lockdown at the moment, trying to teach her kids, you know, over Zoom. And I said, are you all right? You're going okay in lockdown? And she goes, yeah, yeah, but you know, her niece just committed suicide. 
And I said to her, do you need prayer for anything? She reveals that. I'm like, oh, oh that's huge. So I said, I'll, I'll be praying for you. She goes, thanks. And she's turned and walks away. I'm like, oh man, we need to move into the points of pain in people's lives and bring hope and speak life. Even if you just say, I'm gonna pray for you. I'm praying for you. It's become part of our conversations now with my neighbor. Is there anything I can pray for? She'll, she'll just tell me some things. Some things are small, some things are huge like this one. I'm like, whoa. All right, in verse 31, it says, so he went to her, he took her hand and helped her up. I love that. You, you know, you and I carrying into other people's lives day after day, week after week is hope, this life, this healing. We carry this, this message into people's worlds. We carry this, this power of God. I, I'm not gonna stop praying for miracles. No way. God is a God of the impossible, right? I've seen it. I've experienced it, right? We bring that. We bring hope. We bring healing into people's hot messes, the messes that they find themselves in, whether they created it themselves or whether they've just experienced it. And we are called to be a home of hope. And we're bringing that hope, bringing that life into people's worlds. We lift people, we we take them by the hand and we lift them into a a place where they feel better about themselves, better about their lives, better about the future. And they they get a sense, they start to understand the reality of God, the, the, the reality that God loves them, that God is real, that He is our source of hope. He can be their source of hope. We are temples of the Holy Spirit, right? We're homes of hope. We're temples of the Holy Spirit, homes of God. You know, in, in John chapter 14, it says that uh, we will come and make our home with them with you. God is working in us. He is working through us. It says that the fever left her, right? The fever left her and she began to wait on them. And I love where this passage lands. It's so good. This woman is healed. She's better now. She's like, oh, oh, I feel, I was like, I was just on, in bed and now I'm, well, this is, this is better. This is cool. And I imagine she got up and immediately started preparing food for them. You know, like, what do you guys need? You want, you want some lunch? You want some, you want some food? You know, just like my grandma would have done. You know, you come over, well, what do you need? What do you, you want some food? You want some lunch? Right? It's so good. You know, and she's been touched by two things right now. She's been touched by Jesus, His power, His love. But now... She's also been touched by this thing called hope because now she knows that with Jesus, anything can turn around. Anything's possible. That I can find myself in the worst situation. I can be sick. I can be, you know, riddled with whatever. I can be troubled by whatever. But because I have Jesus now, I feel like this is something that we, maybe we've forgotten that now because Jesus is involved, anything's possible? Because God is, is, is not, has not abandoned me, He's close, He's with me, that now anything can turn around. Anything can be healed. Anything can be restored. Nothing is impossible for Him who believes, Jesus said, right? And I feel like maybe as Christians, we've forgotten this. We've been distracted by everything else, but we've forgotten that Jesus is our hope. And because Jesus is in our lives, nothing's impossible. Anything is possible now. Because Jesus is present. He is involved. He's with you. He has not forsaken you. He is with you today, tomorrow, until the very end of the age. Like, it's awesome. That's pretty much what we carry around with us, right? that God is good, that God is good. He loves each person and anything is possible. Anything is possible with God. Like you you can't really enter into people's homes right now. That's That's a bit awkward, that's a bit weird. You can't do that. But that doesn't mean you can't enter into someone's life. 
That doesn't mean you can't make a, an old school phone call or a, a video call or leave a, a meal on someone's doorstep or send them an encouraging text. You know, uh, I've got a mate in Sydney and we, we like to shoot really short videos and just I message them to each other. Just bam, like, hey man, how you doing? Blah, 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 blah. And I message them straight to each other. It's like this video, you know, conversation that we just keep having with, with one another, right? You can send a letter in the mail. We got a card in the mail the other day and it warmed my heart. I was like, ah. Oh, Oh, this is so good. This is so good. This is old school love. This is old school communication. You can still be in people's worlds bringing hope. Even if you can't enter into their house right now. We just got to keep remembering our true north. Our true north as people. Our true north as believers. Our true north as C3 Victory is the salvation of lost people. It's bringing hope into lost people's worlds and helping them f- up so they can find Christ, so they can have relationship themselves with Jesus. That's why we're here, to bring faith, hope, and love into the world around us. So how do we do this? How do you and I step into more of this life where we're oozing, we're overflowing with with hope into other people's worlds. I'll put this in the chat. This is number three. Write this down. We just need to cultivate our relationship with Jesus. Cultivate, like have a real relationship with Jesus. I don't know how many Christians that I talk to, you know, they're, they're doing some stuff. They turn up to church. You know, might read their Bible, you know, every, every now and then, you know, might, might shoot up a few prayers, you know. Yeah, great, that's, that, that's cool. But have a relationship with Jesus, right? Lean into this relationship that's on offer. You, Jesus didn't die so that you could have religion with Him, right? He died for you to have this walking, breathing, living, you know, conversational friendship, lordship, relationship with God. Firstly, I love where this, uh, where this passage starts, actually, because this passage starts with Jesus in the synagogue, right? In verse 29, as soon as they left the synagogue, right? So Jesus is in church. I love that there's a couple of habits here that Jesus is displaying for us to help us understand how He's so connected to God, how He's so connected to the Father, right? So be in church. Like if you're signed on today, this is awesome. If you're watching this or listening to this later on, that's great. That's awesome, you know? And Jesus had just had His identity confirmed in a moment in the synagogue. Look back in the previous passage. And these kind of moments... They happen in the presence of God. You know, these moments where our identity is confirmed and we experience God and all of a sudden we know a bit more about our calling, a little bit more about what we're here for on this earth for, a little bit more about how we're to love God and love others, right? Jesus had just been in the synagogue. I love that it's not the temple either, right? It's, it's not the temple in Jerusalem. We're in Capernaum right now. This story is said in a place called Capernaum. And, and, and Jesus is at the synagogue, which is not the temple, but He's still where the Word is being preached. He's still where people are gathering. And this is what we've got right now. We've got the Word and we've got worship and the people are gathering. It's not perfect. It's not like we're in the same physical space, but it's a lot better than nothing, right? We get to hear the Word. We get to experience God. We get to lean in and grow a little bit more week after week, right? Secondly, if we're going to cultivate our relationship with Jesus, then you need to pick up your Bible every day. You need to pray every day. I love that only a couple of verses later, it says in verse 35, it says, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went to a solitary place where He prayed. I love this. Now, if you've got young kids, that, you might have to do it when it's dark at night time, right? But in the mornings, this is what I do. I get up at 
It's a little bit later now because, you know, we're homeschooling kids and I don't have a, such a rush in the morning. So 6.30 and I'm up and I make my AeroPress coffee and I go and sit on my lounge and I w wind up the blinds so I can see creation. I can get a sense of God and I just sit there and I open my Bible and I open my journal and I sit and I rest and I pray. And I look, and I'm currently I'm journaling really slowly through the book of Mark. That's why we're in Mark today, because I started in Mark about a week or two ago. I've just finished slow journaling through the entire book of Romans, which I started in February, right? Like, take your time with it. Let God speak to you. And then I just sit and, and pray uh, about my, for my family, pray for what's on my heart, pray for, the, pray for you, pray for people in our church, right? And then I've got 14 promises that I've written at the end of my journal, and I just declare that over my family almost every single day. And then I just try and lean into this relationship that I have with God for the rest of the day. Sometimes it's like really awesome and I feel His presence on me through the day and sometimes I just feel disconnected and I just feel like I'm super distracted, you know? You ever felt like that, right? But He's faithful. God's faithful. You and I, we need a constant flow of truth, a constant flow of time with Him, time with the Father, time in the Spirit, time thinking and meditating on Jesus, on who He is, on what He's done for us, and who we are because of Him, right? We need... We need to pause for long enough to learn to hear the voice of God, right? Then we can pray for some things, stuff that God puts on your heart. Pray for the, the people that God places on your heart, right? We can, then when you're out and about, you can follow His lead because you've learned to hear His voice. You've been cultivating this relationship with God. And then when you're out and you're at the, the supermarket or, you know, you're down at 7-Eleven, you know, picking up stuff for the kids or getting petrol or whatever, you know, or when God places in your, your heart somebody, you know, in your street or someone in our church or one of your friends or your family members and says, reach out and pray for them or love on them or make them a meal, then you're listening to the voice of God because you're walking with Him every day single day and you have this heart this knowledge that hang on a minute I'm a home for hope I'm a I'm a I'm a walking talking living breathing you know home for hope I'm a channel of God's love and hope and blessing into the world around me and that characterizes your normal day you might be stuck at home with the kids right now every single day. I'm praying for strength for you, right? But that doesn't mean that God can't speak to you. That doesn't mean that God can't minister through you, right? So good. You just need to be with Jesus. Just be with Jesus. Just follow His lead and just bring healing and hope to the people around you. You and I and our whole church, we are home for hope. How about we pray? How about we pray? God, we just thank You so much for the, the abundance of hope, the abundance of Your love and Your blessing that we have more than enough. Help us to realise that we have more than enough. Help us to step into that strength, step into your love, step into that hope. For any of us who are lacking hope right now for our situation, would you just pour it out right now? Would you help us to arise and shine for our light has come, God? Help us to be filled right now. Just don't, don't log out just yet. Just don't, don't, don't cancel out just yet. Why don't you just... Lift your hands or put out your hands right where you are and just say, God, fill me with your spirit. Fill me afresh. Touch my life. Like fill me. Give me a fresh hunger to walk with you. 
to minister with you, to partner with you. Everything that you're doing, God, I want in. I want in on what you're doing in the world. I wanna be this channel of hope and healing and blessing and life. If that's you, just put out your hands right now. You might have kids running around your feet right now, but just, just, just go for it. Say, God, I need you. Fill me with hope to the point of overflow. Fill me with your presence. Put people on my heart this week that I can reach out to. I can send them a video or you know, give them a video call or leave, a, leave some food on their doorstep or bless them in some other way, God. 